What's going on, y'all? It's your man Hannity from On The Line With. We're on Car Chats, episode 91. Uh, we got Sinosis coming on. He's based out of Alberta right now, but he's from... Uh, I'm not sure where in BC, but he's in BC. He asked regular, regulators, what's up? There's Sinosis. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for coming in. Hope y'all having a good week. talk for sure we could do that interview asap but i gotta get through this one first what's going on bro what's up yo what's going on? Ashton, hold on ashton martin what's going on homie uh congrats on that recent drop it was dope i forgot to let you know but yeah i heard it, it was dope so shout out you oh yeah i forgot Oh, this motherfucker's in a hot tub. Oh, it turned it off. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. What's up? So, car versus hot tub. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got my hot tub time machine. I just need to go back to when I was 21. <laughs> really, you, bro. I wish I was in my 20s still, bro. That way my knees want to be the way they are. Ah. <laughs> uh, I wish I could go back to before I was 25 and I could just warn myself not to get into, uh, not to go to that job that will damage your back for the rest of your life. I hear you, man. Those fucking, that, those fucking labor jobs. Yeah. Uh, Spectrum, what's up? Thanks for joining. So, yeah, uh, we, it, it, it's pronounced Sinosis, right? Sionis. Si Sionis. Si See what I mean, man? man? I always fuck up names. My bad. Sionis. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I should, like I read it and I, it looked like stenosis, so I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? But now, no, now that I'm it's, like, oh. <laughs> it, it, it's it's Sionis and it's it's pronounced like I'm honest, Sy honest. Okay, I see. I feel you. Everything I say, I will be honest with you. That's what. That, well, that's good. That's important. Uh, um, my, I would like to say though, my name comes from comic books, though. Yeah, you want to you want to dive into it a little bit, give people a little understanding why it's why it's na your name's what it is, because you just recently changed it, right? I recently changed it. Yeah, I originally went by a name by Cyber Waffles. I use I I am the leader of a group called HODP, Hustlers of Distinct Personalities. Uh, currently a five member group. Um, sorry guys, I'm a bit stoned. Just don't mind me. Um, <laughs> fucking fried, man. <laughs> um, no, this is just normal for me. Um, do half the interviews I get clipped of. They're like, I see my picture, and I'm like, why? Why am I always so high in it? <laughs> um, but I I changed my name because I was I was getting told that yo know, you got a you got a weird name, kind of a funny name, especially like cyber waffles. Like who who's gonna name themselves with waffles in the name? Um, it, it was because I had I had a friends that I've known since grade three from all the way till I was till the 25. And then I moved out here to, no, I was 20, I was 27 when I moved out here. Sorry, 27. That I knew all the way up till I was 27. And, um, I just wanted to be a way to carry them on type thing as well. But everyone kept telling me you're, you speak too much real shit to be known as like, I'll like have a funny name. So you need to have a real honest name with your real shit. So, I'm a huge comic book nerd. Everyone that would physically knows me or has met me or has had a, uh, like a, just a, a message chat with me on Facebook or Instagram would know I'm, I'm a comic book nerd. I love DC. I love Marvel, Dark Horse, Image. doesn't matter. It's, it's comic books. There is no, it's not this like console wars. It's not, I don't see red. I don't see black and white. I see comic books. Yeah. Can't forget about Varen. Uh, yeah, so my stage name comes from a D-rated villain in Batman comics known as Roman Sionis, a.k.a. Black Mask, who is an independent crime lord and just wants to rule Gotham City. Sounds like an independent artist just wants to take over the, uh, the hip-hop kingdom. Yeah, like, I, like, I, like how you, I like the metaphor that comes from a comic book that's dope. Yeah. And, um, and how long have you been making music for? Uh... Uh, started writing and, and 
recording and performing music, uh, re writing and recording music since 2018 and performing music since 2019. Fuck you, COVID. You took a year from me. You're almost two years from me for performing, but three years of performing too. And uh, well, how's sorry. It, how do you feel the response been uh, for you, like as an artist? Well, when I first started, um, I started off in BC hip hop, and BC hip hop is uh, uh, how do I put this in nice terms? Because I met a lot of really, really dope artists in BC that I will always treasure their friendships, like Kairos and uh, uh, the Hazmat Crew, just to name a couple. Yeah, shout out hey, um, hey, hey, oh, even Details and Mystery ESQ, those guys are fucking dope. Uh, I might be opening for them during their tour. I had details on uh, last month. Um, Jay Fraser is really dope. Like, I, I can keep, keep naming, like, Brax. Brax and Gully are really dope artists, too. Um, I've worked with them, like, multiple tracks. Um, and uh, Whisper, or is it uh, Whisper KOC? I can't remember what he... I, I know that it's just Whisper. Um, anyway, there's so many great, great artists in BC, but at the same time, BC is... If you don't measure up to a certain extent, it's basically if you ask for help, they want to just rather you just watch your like, uh, rather cut your wrist and watch you fall, or like you know, like they'll give you a helping hand, but they'll smile and just take it away, you know, brush their hair, like, uh, it, like side. It's like a very. Yeah. It, there's a lot of gatekeeping. It sounds like. It it, it, it very much was. Um, and the moment I moved to Alberta. I I was able to meet artists that I've known about for years, like Polly Free, um, my homie Feral T, um, Shoddy Mills, Chad L. L e. Uh I was able to meet the Poltergeist. I was able to meet these guys um, and actually become friends with them. They were they originally were just artists on my Spotify playlist, and now they're like my friends. Like, I I I can't express how like much I have love for these guys. Um, I, I, I will always give them their roses. I will always give everyone their roses, no matter where I see them, because I'm an art, I'm a fan first, artist second. I don't hear that a lot on here. Um, I, when I started, I, I was, when I started, I was, uh, I was always a fan. That's all I was. Uh, I was a student of hip hop. I kept studying the game. I kept studying other artists. I studied the underground, the mainstream. Uh, I know rappers in Europe. I know rappers in Australia. Um, I know rappers even in Japan. Like I studied the game, and then when I got bored of studying, like 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 um, mainstream and underground in Europe and all that, I started studying locals. And locals is where I was like, holy fuck, everyone is missing out on this shit. Like they have no idea what they're missing out on when it comes to hip hop. And they're they they say, oh, I want that real shit. I want the shit that hits you, and I want the shit that hits you in your soul. It makes you like feel the pain and everything like that. Um, and that that's literally in the local scene. You you want you want real hip hop? That's in the local scene. I um you want real real good producers that like that are like metro booming hire on mason rex nate nate and predator butcher um starcore starcore thank you um uh can i'm played for keeps um imperative. They're, they're, they're s imperative there there's so many dope producers in this local scene that get slept on because they aren't popping like metro or they're not popping like dr dre and it's it's mind boggling to me because there's there's so much good talent there. Like yeah. it hurts myself. Like all I did was study this game, and the reason I became an artist is because I kept seeing what was being pushed out as mainstream hip hop. Yes, you got Kendrick, and you got Cole, and you got Logic, and you got Joiner. Yes, you still have lyrical rap, but it's getting smothered by this rap that you wouldn't call what you would normally listen to and i'm not yeah, it's just trying to diss me and i'm not trying to diss me goes because i love me goes i love 21 savage like you 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 cannot i fucking love savage like but like it's not the same it's not the same type of hip-hop that we grew up on you, no it's definitely you can sugarcoat it you can paint it up you can put a bow on it it's not the same hip-hop no, it's, 
it, it it's evolved into something totally different. It's not it's not even in the same like sound element as what we were back in like the nineties, early two thousands. And I'm not saying like the 808s are crap or anything like that because I love my 808s. I love my boom bap. I love learning trap styles and horrorcore and I'm learning drill right now. Like I love learning hip hop. It's always been what it's a part of me. Even when I game, I just listen to hip hop interviews. Like lately, I just listened to Kevin Hart and Dr. Dre heart to heart interview. That was fucking dope. Yeah. Anyone that hasn't checked that out needs to check that out. Like seriously. That was a good interview for sure. And so you, with the music you've been making, I noticed that you've had some pretty dope, like like features that you've had on your on your tracks. That you've had some pretty recognized names, along with like your your regular collaborators that that are local. Uh, what makes yeah, you, what makes you choose those specific names? Like we won't get into the names, but like you know what I'm talking about. What 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 makes? No, you I know what you're talking about, but like. I grew up on old school hip hop. I grew up on, okay, the you, people in the comment section might laugh to this, but I did go through a golf scene, but my golf scene was the Juggalo scene. Yeah, I was an ICP fan. I still kind of am an ICP fan. I will go to their shows if they come to my city because out of any live hip hop show I've ever seen, they put on one hell of a yeah, show. Wow. Their entertainment is impossible to beat. And you, if you haven't been to an ICP show, you fucking need to go because they're like even if you don't like their music it is insane to compare it to like oh my god it is just insane yeah. and like when they have the juggalo festival or the gathering of the juggalos they don't they don't even just have like artists that are similar to them like they've right. had artists like like they've, they've had, got they've suicide had boys <laughs> like you can't, like, the, anyone that wants to diss ICP, go ahead and diss ICP. But they've worked with, they've had Suicide Boys, they've had, they've worked and have Ice Cube at uh, their festival. They've worked with Shaggy 2 Dope. Uh, not Shaggy 2 Dope, uh, fuck. Uh, Snoop Dogg, my bad. <laughs> um, I'm a bit stoned. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, they've worked with several of the biggest names. You wouldn't have Tech 9 right now if it wasn't for ICP. ICP came out at the same time like NWA came out. Like that's uh, like a big one to swallow for a lot of people. A lot of people when you say like when you said you wouldn't have Tech 9 if you didn't have ICP, a lot of people are going to not realize that that's a fact. Like and like even Eminem like Eminem like okay like I know Eminem and ICP had a beef, but, like, I don't think everyone realizes Eminem said on Still Don't Give a Fuck. It was either Just Don't Give a Fuck or Still Don't Give a Fuck. He said, yeah. I'm a cross between Manson, Esham, and Ozzy. Esham is currently great friends with Violent J of ICP. Yeah. And then on Wicked Ways, he brought the line back and said, I'm a combination of Skylar Gray, Violent J, and Tyler the Creator. So. And Violent J is the lead rapper of ICP. So say what you guys want. They have the respect in the hip hop game. They've been in the game for 30 plus years. They donate, they do charity work without cameras or anything on them. Like, yeah. you, you can't beat that. You can't. Yeah, no, definitely, bro. Like, I definitely, see, I, I definitely agree with you. I'm not like a huge fan of them, but I, I give them the respect. You have to give them their flowers. Regardless if you don't like them or not, you have to give them their flowers. Mm -hmm. Mercules is even doing a song with them. I don't know if you yeah. saw that, but Mer yeah, uh, Mercs. I saw that a few days ago, yeah. It was posted on, like, on other media sites, too. I saw that. Mercules has been so doing a thing, bro. Shout out to Mercules, man, and being, signed, being the first artist from Canada to be signed to Death Row. That's dope. Yeah. You know, like that was dope. He's definitely he's definitely maneuvering right. Like first he was with uh, Tech Nine and, and Strange Music, and now he's Merch? with Snoop. No, Merch? no, Merch? no. Like, bro, no Merch? Going to two different. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Merch did not start with uh, Tech. No. He started with Snack the Ripper. No, I know that. No, I mean signed to like like when he was getting like bigger. I'm talking about not not before. Like I know he was Stomp Down Killers and he was down with uh, Stealth Bomb. I don't remember him being signed to Strange, though. That's the thing. I know Strange's roster in and out. Yeah, he may maybe he was just affiliated. Maybe I'm wrong on that. 
I think he's just really good friends with Tech. I think yeah. that's what it is. But regardless, the death row thing is amazing. Yeah. So, you have a? Do you have any plans? Like, what was your last project that you put out? My last project that I put out. What was it? Okay, I haven't released anything since 2022. Yeah, 2022. No, no, no. Sorry, scratch that. I have featured on a track with Feral T called "Feel My Pain." I uh, not feel my pain. Um, tell me why. Tell me why. That was my most recent track. And how is the response? Uh, pretty well. And like, I I, uh, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head because I don't have my other phone with me. It's other not, phone meaning I, just number, what? Tell the story of how the response is to people. Uh, it's just it's a it's a it's a track that will hit you deep. Um, like in my verse, I basically talk about suicide. I'm not suicidal. No one, uh, but I have been in a deep place before, and I do talk about like things that you typically wouldn't want to hear, type thing. But that's the thing about me: I rap about the shit you don't want to hear. I'm the I'm I'm telling you the truth. I'm being honest with you. I'm not sugarcoating a picture. I'm not telling you how much bitches I got and how much money I have and the the car I drive because I can't drive after my ba my I got I had an accident and basically broke my back. Um, I, I can't drive. I'm not legally allowed to drive. So like, I don't have a fancy whip. Man, like, I'm not, like, I'm not your typical that, rapper. All that's just materialistic fucking, if, that, if that's the only endeavors people have, then they're doing it for the wrong reasons. Exactly. And, and so, what do you have planned? Do you have a, do you have anything planned for this year, like an album or an EP, anything? This before? this year, this year, I have actually nothing planned. To be honest, the reason for that is because I'm rebuilding my brand, and then when uh, and getting a bunch of songs in the tank for 2024, and 2024 will be just an artillery fire for me. Or yeah, no, definitely. That, and like I've already We're, seen a couple of <laughs> things that are going on for it. It's fucking dope. And like I have so one, two, I have a full album, two full albums in the works, and two EPs in the works. It sounds like you have a lot of recording, man. Uh, it's uh, there's an HODP album coming soon, brand new. There's never been an HODP album. Uh, we there was a lot of hiccups along the along the way to become the group it is. Um, but I believe in the artists that I've chosen. Tell me a little more about it. Um, HOD, HODP stands for Hustlers of Distinct Personalities. We, just every rapper is now, a hustler. Sorry, what? Is, is the group just combined of different personalities, like different one side of the spectrum to the other? No, basically everyone, it's everyone's own rap personality got brought to the table and it actually fixed as like, as one. Kind of like how the Wu Tang formed. If you remember how the Wu Tang formed, it was like Riza, Jizza, and Old Dirty Bastard were one group, and then they started picking. They didn't start picking, but they started finding members that fit their sound type thing. Yeah. And the way that they were going for the hunt. Yeah, and apparently they did a very good fucking job. <laughs> yeah. So t yeah, but, tell me a little about the artists and stuff in HODP because like that, you you speak about it a lot. And it's so it's basically my baby. I I it was the thing that I that was the beginning of my hip hop stage. I started it off as a trio group. That third member decided to do his own thing and fuck off before the first ever real single came out. We did a bunch of remixes um, before we did a, an actual song, and then um, and the remixes response was very well even the first remix we did we did uh not surviving the times like my, my flow is not the greatest on it um we're all just starting out and right now i believe it sits at 900 views on youtube i've never paid for an ad in my life it's, i mean man if you're if you're if you're if the group that you're working with you're able to like bounce off each other's energy then that's all that matters man that's what keeps it going exactly so i 
I got a I got a question from one of the people watching from my, the homie Spectrum. He asked, "What's been your favorite show that you performed at so far?" Oh fuck! Um, thanks, Spectrum. Does it have to be the one I performed at, or did, can it be one that's literally coming up in two weeks? <laughs> I mean, you really know how it's gonna go in two weeks, so that's the thing. You well, that, anything that, can, yeah. Anything can happen. That's true. That that's true. Anything can happen. Uh, okay. Then the best show I've ever done is my homie Slim Ake is gonna love this. Um, what I started off doing house party shows in BC. Um, BC, we like Chilliwack now. Like I grew up in Chilliwack. Chilliwack has a club now that they do hip hop shows at. But when I was growing up and I started off doing music, eh, there wasn't really many clubs. Um, unless you went to Vancouver, like, like, yeah, you got clubs in Vancouver, but like outside of that, it was scarce. So my homie DJ Slim Inc. He's going on tour in the United States right now. Uh, I think it's 12 dates. Shout out to him. Uh, shout out to Omi Inc. Shout out to AK 3K. Um, like, I, like I, I'm not kidding. I have so many friends in this game. It's not even funny. Um, it's all about networking, bro. That's what I do. So, shout out to little god shout out to little bunny yellow bunny um anyways so there was this house party in coquitlam no it was either coquitlam or white rock i can't remember which house party shout it was but coquitlam, man. what shout out to coquitlam man because the first yeah. the first bc artist i worked with when i was making music back in the like 2010, 2011 time, I, I worked with and someone, I forget his name, but he was the first BC artist I worked with. That's fair. And he was out of Coquitlam, and I was like, yo, this guy's dope. Um, so I can't remember which city it was exactly in, but shit went off the fucking roof. Like, we had people hanging from the ceiling. Um, <laughs> like, you, 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 we had the cops showed up. Like, everything you can possibly think of for a hip-hop show actually fucking happened. That's how it should be, man. Got that, gotta have the energy or it's just not a fucking, it's not an event. And, like, most people put me as an opener. I'm glad they put me as an opener because I bring the same energy as, like, what you want from Lloyd Banks or DMX. I got that fucking grimy ass fucking sound. Yeah, yeah, no, you definitely do have a grimy sound on your on your tracks that I've heard, man. And um, just like a shout out, like shout out to the East Coast. Like I'm for, I'm I was raised in BC. Um, now live in Alberta, but my my home is Ottawa. Like my my home, I was born in Ottawa. I know that's not entirely the East Coast. But it's right underneath, underneath, kind of underneath New York, and uh, yeah, above New York. But whatever you guys know what I mean. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I have a. I've been told I have a heavy New York style. I don't spit it, like I'm from the West Coast. It, I don't spit like. Like it has like a new. It's like a New York style blended with like a little bit of like, like, I don't know, like Bay Area kind of. Yeah. You know, because I've been told I got I I've, I've been told my like and you guys will hear this in 2024 when I start dropping new music. Um, my sound is very similar, and I've been told it's very similar to E40, Royce the Five Nine, and uh, Lloyd Banks of G Unit. Shout out Lloyd Banks. That's one of the punchline kings, bro. Yeah, I'm still learning my own punchlines. In my opinion, in my opinion, though, the punchline king goes to self-titled. Self-titled is. Fucking dope, man. People, he's very, people don't bring him up enough, and they shouldn't. Especially like, um, what is it? I walk into a church and let my motherfucking gun spray because Chick Fil A A is closed on motherfucking Sundays. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, yeah. No, subtitled is fucking dope, man. So, like, I, as I was saying about HODP, HODP stands for Hustles of Distinct Personalities, and it's about bringing, each member brings their own style to the table. Kind of like you got Wu-Tang, you got D12, you got uh, Dark Lotus, you got, there are so many good rap groups out, out there that are huge inspiration to HODP. I made it an acronym because HODP is like ICP, it's easy to chant for people. Um, 
and it's easy to remember. If you can't remember Hustles of Distinct Personalities, it still stands for HODP Crew. Like, that's how you search me up on YouTube. And the right. first song that will pop up is In the Couch. Yes, uh, Smoking Weed music video. So did you did you start creating HODP when you started it as a self? Uh, like, right? right I, no, I, I, st I started... I started writing as HODP. I didn't start becoming a solo artist until I moved to Alberta, technically. Okay, and what made you change to being, a, like being solo when you were in uh, Alberta? Um, more, my, my rap partner, I'm not going to get into too huge details right now, but he's currently in a relationship where... The one that you don't typically hear of in relationships, where the woman beats him. That's so, so I'm not going to get into details, but I have a song coming out that's the whole detailed story of what he's going on. But the story is Jake and Jenny, and Jake is getting abused by his girlfriend Jenny. The hook will be done by my friend Cass City in uh, Prince Williams or no Williams Lake in BC. Um, uh. And she, uh, I've asked her to do the hook, Did like, you say Cass basically, me what? Did you say Cass City, like C-A-S-S-C-I-T-Y? C-I-T-Y, yeah. Yeah, 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 I've been following her for a little while. She's supposed to be on the show soon, too. Uh, she, she, I've already fucking done world. I, I did What? It's a small fucking world. Yeah. Um, she's a very talented artist, very beautiful voice for singing um i've asked her to be on the hook and i want her to do something like um because i know that, that there's women that have been in, in abusive relationships and i don't want them to feel like i'm not giving not f feeling them on their same level so the hook will be feeling like i want it to be like jenny and jake have been reversed and reversed again so everyone that's listening to it can feel like they've been through it regardless of who it is and they can just change the names up because it's just simple names jenny and jake yeah no i feel you it's a good it's a good concept and so that's going to be on like one of the projects coming out in 2024 yeah uh, i might be on my album um hfg uh hungry for greatness okay and uh, so one, that's one of the album titles yeah that's one of my that's that that and uh, the other the other one I can share is um, hustlers for hire. <laughs> I like that one. Um, it's a play on words of the comic book of Luke Cage and Iron Fist and other heroes of Heroes for Hire by Marvel. Yeah, you're really inspired by comic books, eh? Oh, extremely, extremely. Like my lyrics are even extremely comic booky. I, I have a song about Joker, three different Jokers called Multiple Choice, which is based on the famous quote of uh, by the Joker that if he he would not he would doesn't want to have an origin story, but if he did, he would rather it be multiple choice. I like that because yeah. he's so mysterious. Yeah, no, definitely like that. You have like a muse that you stick to in life. You just you you don't really give a shit what like if people are like eh it's a gimmick but it's not it's if you if it's if it what inspires you then it's no gimmick. It's and the other thing it allows me to do especially because I chose a comic book name and I I always go around that I am named after a comic book supervillain well not a supervillain um comic book um, uh, gangster that that's the reason that. I portray violence in my lyrics is because I'm not talking from my perspective because no, for the love of God, I've never done a thing as violence in my life. And here I am not, I'm not trying to sound like I'm fake. I'm not. Um, but all my, if I'm speaking violence in my lyrics, it's coming from a comic book perspective. Like I literally have said, I slit your throat with paper mache. Who the fuck says they're going to slit your throat with paper mache? Like, honestly, like, 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 let's be honest, like, they're, everyone's like, I'll grab the butcher knife and I'll stab you with this bitch. Like, that's what they'll be like. Or they're like, I got a Glock in my pocket and I shot you out of it. Like, that's what they're like. They're not, like, they're not being creative with it. Oh, man, that was fucking funny. <laughs> and I'm not trying to diss, I'm not, and if anyone that, like, writes violent bars and, worry about um, but he's mad like, I'm not dissing, I'm not dissing y'all. I'm not, trust me, I'm not. You're saying if anybody's mad at what you're saying, then the shoe fucking fits. Sorry. I'm not. I'm not trying to be the the hater. I'm not. I'm just 
being honest. Sigh honest. What's yeah. up? Bro, that, that's that's what the show is, man. We talk about it, we bounce off the topics and like people get to know like who you are, what you what you're into and why you do what you do and like you're you're giving them the a full a, a very good image right now of who Sionis is. Exactly. Um and I'm excited to work with you more. Oh, I'm excited to work with you too and I'm like I'm excited to come out to Ottawa and do some recording and possibly get a show oh, like like work like you, I've had some contact with people. Okay. I appreciate that. Like like honestly like the, like you, like this the city means so much to me, and I want to do so much for it. And I know, like, like, I'm not in the city itself, but I want to work with so many Ontario artists and Ottawa artists. Like, my one of my main producers, um, Luke Two Booming, uh, one half of Two Booming, is from Toronto. Like, like I can't express how much I'm in love with the province. Yeah. I don't like Justin Trudeau, but like, I love the province. A lot. We 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 don't, a lot of us don't like him, so it's all right. <laughs> but like he's true done the next election the, the next election um there's so many people I want to give their flowers to because like I can't even name them all but um the one show that's coming out that I was talking about that I'm actually excited for I wanted to say one more thing about HODP uh, you guys got to check out Feral T, uh, Wasteland with two X's. Uh, doesn't have music out yet, but he will soon. But he's in HODP. And he's on all, almost all of the tracks. Um, currently goes under CS Benny. Uh, just going under a name change. Uh, Kill Grave. Uh, um, and that's with one L in Kill Grave. Uh, um, and Shoddy Mills. And then there's myself. Where? I'm gonna definitely have to check them out. And yo, if you let them know, they tell them that if they want to be on the show, they're welcome on the show. I think they do. Trust me. Well, I think they do. Them, tell them just to hit me up on here, and that, and then I know who they are, so I can schedule it. Can I send you like? Can I send you a bunch of artists? Like, as long as you, yeah, yeah, I don't care who you send me, but as, let them know that like uh, to hit me up if they no, want to do interviews, because I, like I, I I don't mind reaching out to people, but like. If they're interested in being on the show, then let them reach out. No, no, I will. I I just got. I know some people that would like to be interviewed. Trust Definitely. me. Um, we talk, my I was gonna say, can we talk about a couple more things before we go? Of course, man. What? Uh, you, the biggest. What about thing? I feel, what about the weed? What? Tell me about the weed. Okay. Um. Right now, I'm smoking. This is gonna be a funny name. You guys might be thinking I'm making it up. But it's from the company Weed Me. If you yeah, live yeah, in Canada, I, I do smoke, smoke Weed Me products all the time. Uh, um, they had a. I work at a dispensary here in Alberta, so there was a, a sale going on for staff members, where it was like uh, a big, big deal. Uh, I can't say the percentage wise because people will get mad, um, and I don't want to get in trouble either with my work. But um, Anyways, I work at Fire and Flower. If you live in Alberta, if you live in the St. Albert area, especially Inglewood, or you want to come out to Inglewood, I'm, like, out there, guys. Like, come and say hi. Um, but I got an ounce from them, and it was called uh, Tranquilize Elephantizer. <laughs> and I feel like I get tranquilized every time I smoke it. I like their blue iguana. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. I love that. I also like their Black Star. Black Star is good, man, especially the pre rolls. They burn so good. But what like shocked me about Black Star was that it's it's a it's classified as a hybrid, but it's a hundred percent dominant indica. Like there's not a shred of sativa in it. Yeah. But it's yeah. classified as a hybrid. Yeah, man. Even your sativa's not me pretty hard. Um, I don't typically smoke sativas because me the piney I don't know if most People know, so like I'm gonna, I'm just gonna lecture everyone before we get into like how much weed I smoke because I smoke a fuck ton of weed. But um, mm -hmm. be, before I get into that, I wanna, I wanna just throw in a little lecture for everyone that I know because a lot of people shop at the dispensary. I guarantee you, a lot of people shop at the dispensary. Yeah. Um, because it's convenient. Um, there is such things called terpenes. Terpenes is actually what get you high. Everyone thinks that it's THC because that's what we've known our entire lives. Um, 
but since marijuana has been legalized, we've been able to dissect the plant and we know about THC, we know about CBD, of course, but we know about CBN, CBG, C, uh, CBC, and, um, and terpenes. Now, terpenes is what actually gets everyone high. Terpenes is heavily found in a lot of things you enjoy. And the higher the terpenes, the higher you're going to get fucked up. Yep. Uh, so, like, if it's two and a half to three percent, congratulations, guys. You are going to get, like, fucked the fuck up. Even if it's 25% THC, the terpenes alone will fuck you up more than the THC. Yeah. I just, I just popped some color, the, the brand uh, or this company color cannabis, yeah. and I just face cake, and there's like, like, like I think it's three percent terpenes. Yeah. Yeah, and it, like, I, I get fucking ripped. Yeah, and um, and I believe what's in space cake is carlophylline. Do you feel like your throat's kind of like on fire? A little bit. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that might be beta carlophylline then. Um, then there's because uh, it's definitely got, it's an indica, so it's definitely got some mercine in there. And I'm gonna head and guess that it has probably lemony. Now, Merce, now the three the three terps that I just named. I'm gonna tell you guys something really cool about them. Uh, Mercine heavily comes from mangoes. Like a fresh mango, you eat it, you get to the core. That's mercine. Um, after that, you um, with the, the carlophylline. Carlophylline is heavily found in black brown pepper. Um, that's why you feel like that's why it feels like your throat's on fire or your lungs are on fire. Yeah. So it's what it kind of does with is it goes down the wrong pipe, especially. Um, and then my, my, my one of my favorites, limonene. I, the name literally sells, says it all, but like it's lime and lemon, limonene. It definitely has that taste to it. And then like there are terps also like humulene, which is compared to like uh, um, hoppy beer. like. The, there's a lot of terps out there, like hundreds, and I recommend people actually like experiment with terps. And like, if you if you if you get something that says a terpene percent, then um, you Google what the percents. Uh, if it doesn't tell you what the terpenes are, Google what they are and like find out like what terpenes work for you, and then you will actually see a different high. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you one thing: you're very knowledgeable on a lot of subjects. Thank you. Um, would you believe that this is my first interview? Well, thank you for letting me be by me. Oh, it was your own. You know, like, like, that's not the, this isn't the first time someone's told me that. I've done this for a lot of people, and they're like, this is my first interview. And I'm like, okay, well, thank you for choosing all the line with it. You're the first one to actually give me a shot, to be honest. But like, that, thank you. I fucking do, man. I don't know why people don't realize this yet. That's what I do. I literally, like, it doesn't matter if you're just starting, like, yesterday or you've been in it for, like, 15 to 30 years. I don't care. I just want to hear stories. Exactly. Um, so, um, before, and then the other Instagram, Instagram so, will cut us off if we if we go over their fucking time limit. So, okay, so what, the, what, what's, in, what's one more, the important topic you wanted to bring up? You can go ahead and speak so, about it, bro. Streaming services need to change for artists, like now. Yes, I I know I know I sound like I'm a quiet voice on this, but I'm not. Snoop Dogg has spoken on this. There's several artists that have spoken on this. We need to stand as a united one. I know we don't have a union, but we need to stand as basically as one to fucking get better fucking streams. Yeah, well, look at look look at the writer strike in Hollywood, bro. Like, why can't hip hop or music have a fucking union? Because. It's it's so diverse and so like where there's independent, there's mainstream, there's underground, like there's so much diversity that it's so hard to but get then, that. At but the, it is at the end of the day, it's your choice to join a union. So it doesn't matter if it's diverse and shit. If someone doesn't want to join, that's on them. But my question is, is if Spotify artists or whatever, like wherever you see your most money come in from, if you're making 0 0.0004 of a penny or 0 0.00036 ninth of a penny or uh, you're on title and you're making the most money there, like, shout out if you don't use title, like, come on, guys. Um, 89 streams make $1, guys. Like, come on. Um, anyways, um, we need to stand up and demand 25 cents because if we're getting paid – like less than a fucking penny. How much is Spotify getting paid? How much is Apple Music getting paid? Like this is the real 
question we should be asking ourselves. Yep. How much are these streaming services getting paid for our art that we put hundreds into, not if, even if thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, depends if you are at that level and you're like charging, like you're getting a soup dog feature. Like, like, I can't fathom this. Like there is so much that needs to change in hip hop. If we need to strive for a better future and especially if we don't want AI taking over. Yeah, and the music industry is very, very fractured right now. Extremely fractured. What do you think? What What do you think could be done to to like help streaming? What could be help done streaming is we get it. Well, one, we need to form at least a union of some fucking sort. Um, two, if that doesn't happen, we need to uh, all move over to title. We need to force our fans over into title. We need to get everyone into title. If you want to see start seeing a bigger pay. Move everyone into title. It's 89 streams to make $1. And the only reason everyone doesn't support it is because Jay-Z made it. But Jay-Z did it for us fucking artists. Yeah. Sure, I have my boy. Uh, shout out to um, Travis Bryant out of Montreal. He, uh, all his music videos, all his music, he always, like, pushes it on title first. Like, he just only recently put his videos on YouTube. And he only got them put on YouTube because he got, like, a, a Vivo channel. So he was like, all right. Exactly. So I feel, yeah, yeah I if know you want, that. Wanna see, you want to see the money that we grew up on, that you saw your rappers getting your money from? Title. Start pushing your fans to title. Even if it's a bigger fucking pay per month, it's the reason that it is, is because you're going to make more fucking money. Yeah, you got to invest in it. And it shows who your real fans are. You want to know who your real fans are? Push title. Yeah. See how many numbers you actually have. You're, yeah, you're very passionate, man, and I appreciate that because there's a lot of people in this who are like, they want to make it, but they, they, they don't they don't have the heart. Like, yeah, they're, they're good at music, but they don't have the heart to actually, like, fulfill that whole making it persona. They're doing this just for either the clout the money or the fame there's a very small percentage and i'm not saying 10 percent. i'm more going maybe 25 30 percent and that's being fair i don't i'm maybe 40 percent. i don't want to say half because half wouldn't feel right but maybe 40 percent would be the accurate number of there are artists in the game that are doing this for their blood their sweat the tears and the soul of hip-hop yep it, it, it's they, been, yes. it's been it's been, yeah. been very very dumbed down over the last decade and a bit. Well, especially when um a song has to be at least two minutes long, at minimum two minutes long, or sorry, maximum two minutes long. Um, and if the, you don't have the listener within the thirty seconds, they're skipping you. Yep. The numbers so, of attention spans have diminished fucking drastically. And... Which I feel bad for every single one of their girlfriends. <laughs> my guy all right so we got you again on the show you can come back anytime you're always welcome on man i always have reoccurring guests uh, but, uh I'll before, just say oh, just before i go shout out to spectrum for checking in yeah, uh constantly perfect. that comment was solid see had my first interview with you too thank you bro um and I want to say, because um, I didn't get to clarify on this, the weed I smoke about daily, it's about, I want to say about seven grams of kush that I'm smoking off my dab pen and I'm taking a couple of dabs. And don't ask me about edibles because edibles don't fit, hit me. I've literally bro, eaten six. Me either, bro. I'm telling you, man. Everyone's like, yo, I took an edible. I was so fucked. I'm like, bro, I ate a whole fucking bag and I was sitting there and I was bored. Everyone, um... Everyone I've told, and I, I, I fucking, I don't remember what the video is, but I had, uh, I, I've eaten six to seven milligrams of THC edibles. Didn't feel a thing. Not a shred. <clears throat> at least I know when you're down in Ottawa in September, at least I know that we're going to be getting high, so. Oh, you, you will be. I'll be bringing weed with me. Oh, we'll be. I gotta get my, <clears throat> I gotta get my, I gotta get my brother and my dad stoned, because <laughs> they also smoke weed out there. All right, man. And so let everybody know your name again, where they can find you, and then I'll take them out. Okay. Um, I am Sionis, S-Y-O-N-I-S, like uh, Sierra, Yankee, Oscar, 
November, Indiana, Sierra. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for um, that. So that, like, so if you guys didn't hear me correctly yeah. on the correct I letters, um, my, 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 <laughs> my, my Instagram is infamous Sionis, like infamous by Mob Deep album, because that's my favorite like album by them. Good call. Um, and you know, I and someone that used to work with Mob Deep on the show a couple weeks ago. I had Illa G on the show. Oh, it's all good. I I believe I got Mob Deep. Um, no. I, I can't do it. I got Mob Deep. T uh, not, I got Prodigy of Mob Deep tattooed on me, um, and a bunch of other Fallen Dead rappers like Biggie, Nate, Pac, ODB, Big L. Where, Easy where, proof. Where that Big L? Um, <clears throat> and Emma Doom, of course. Um, but so again, but, like like you said, it's Sionis. S Y O. S Y O N I S. Um, you find me. You find me on YouTube, the best place, and it will drink you the fast. Direct you the fastest to my uh, streaming services, which is uh, my YouTube channel is H O D P Crew. Um, and the song you'll best find me under is Into Couch. Um, and then. After that, Spotify, everything you can possibly find me on, except for SoundCloud. And if you listen to my song, No Games, you'll find out why. Word up. All right. So, everybody, thanks for tuning in for episode 91 of Hard Chance. We're on our road to 100. We're going to be there soon. Fuck yeah. And if you're not following me, make sure you give me a follow and hit me up if you want to interview. If you're not following Sionis, make sure you follow him and you keep up to date with his content and what he's doing what he's dropping he has a lot of great things coming up i'm i can attest to that because i'm in the little loop that he tells people things so everybody make sure to keep up to date with him and uh shout out to the sponsor of the show diamonds rising if you want a bucket hat or some other dope merch go check them out you can find them at shout out to um all the producers i work with all the ones that i named all the artists i named especially feral t and poly free uh those guys are the coolest of them all uh, Shout out to the guys that jumped in the chat today, like Spectrum, Hype Man, I saw a few others. Uh, I saw Oh So Good, uh, Mavstar, what's up? Zilla. Joe, Tony, Zilla, yeah, Zilla, my guy, what's up? Appreciate everybody coming in. And Zionis, I appreciate you coming on the show. I hope to see you again soon. Oh, yeah. And I'm your man, yeah, you yeah, I'm your man Hanley from On The Line With, so make sure you come back and tune in. We'll probably have another episode tonight, maybe, or maybe... Probably during the week. I know I have Special K coming up from the East Coast, so we'll be talking to him about his new album produced by Classified. And yeah, everybody have a good day, good weekend, stay safe, don't get caught up in no bullshit, and don't do, don't do shit that I wouldn't do, which doesn't leave you with much. Shout out to Hip Hop, shout out to Sully, and shout out to my producer, Play for Keeps. Shout out to you, bro. Shout out to you as well, bro. Have a good one, we'll talk soon. Yeah, we will. Peace.